This is the 1987 Fisher model EQ877 nine band graphic equalizer. I got this as part of the Fisher 891 tower stereo system. And that's actually one of the problems with this. It was designed to be part of a stacked component system, and it really can't be used for anything else because the inputs and outputs on the back are these uh, rather short, very inconvenient, permanently attached RCA cables. So that's one problem that this has. And that is one of the problems that I intend to fix tonight. What I've done is I've taken the back panel of a cassette deck I recently took apart, and I cut out the part that has the line input and output RCA jacks in it. This thing right here. I used some acetone to remove the playback and record markings. So now it's just line in, line out. And this is going to go onto here. And then I can install a couple of standard RCA jacks straight into the unit. Now, I only have the Dremel tool to do this right now, so it's probably going to look rather messy. I was able to jam the equalizer into this workbench, and that provided a stability that allowed me to actually cut a surprisingly good looking hole into the back panel of this equalizer. I use the clamp to hold the metal piece onto the back panel for drilling the first couple of holes and I was then able to stick some screws through those holes and drill the remaining hole without the clamp in place. I use the air compressor to thoroughly clean out any metal shavings from the inside. That's important, obviously. And I mounted the new section of the back panel. And I'd say this does look surprisingly neat. I now have the new RCA jacks installed and the existing wires connected. And I do have a feeling this was the most complicated part of this project. I really don't like soldering these shielded cables. Now, given the fact that the tape monitor jacks are just hooked up using this unshielded flat flex wire, I could have probably replaced these uh, shielded cables with, uh, you know, just some some normal unshielded wires, and it would have worked, but... Better, better be safe than sorry, I guess. Here is the equalizer back in action, and I'm now finally able to use this without needing any adapters or extension cords or anything like that. Just plug it straight into the test setup. That's nice. I was thinking about cleaning these uh, switches on the front because they did appear to be very scratchy, but that seems to have fixed itself. You just need to use them a couple of times. So I'm not going to mess with them since they are buried under all these cables. So what I now want to take a look at is the power supply section. This power supply is quite a disaster. The first thing you'll notice is they bypassed all the fuses. So, there are no fuses. This fuse up here, rated at 2.5 amperes, is only for the AC outlets on the back. So, there is absolutely no protection for this circuit. The next thing is, they used, or should I say, abused, these tiny little TO92 type transistors as linear regulators and as you can certainly imagine even at the very very low power consumption that this equalizer has these get very very hot the filter capacitors are absolutely pathetic 470 microfarads and then last issue 
we have this nasty old circuit glue, which in some places has turned into a solid black color. So that's going to be conductive, and therefore it needs to come out. Now, thankfully, and rather unexpected for a product made by Fisher, a.k.a. Sanyo, the bottom panel is removable, so I can get access to this, and I can try to improve on at least a few of the problems that this has. I decided not to completely redesign the power supply, mostly because I just don't have the time to do so right now. So, it's mostly the same. The circuit glue is gone, as you can see. I took out the filter capacitors, and I did check them. They were perfectly fine. They are rated 35 volts. They do run on 26 volts. I would have had some nice higher value replacements, but unfortunately those were rated only 25 volts, so that's not going to work. The linear regulator transistors are still the same. I went through and I checked all the solder joints. There was really only one that was bad, but I touched up a lot of other ones as well. Probably the most significant changes up here. I decided to kill power to these outlets because, well, it's kind of a stupid idea to have AC mains voltage so close to the small signal audio circuitry. So I was able to repurpose the fuse that was originally for those outlets into a primary fuse for the transformer. I measured its input current in operation and it is something just above 50 milliamps so I put in an 80 milliamp fuse right there so now this is protected with a fuse which is good because this is not a, ha a hard power switch this uh, is only a standby so the transformer is always supplied with power so it's a good idea to have a fuse right there and that's it for the power supply. And I think that's it for this project. I think I got everything done. Now, you may be asking, why did I do that modification? Well, I have this setup that I use to transfer videos. And I have this equalizer to improve the sound quality if necessary. It's a techniques equalizer, and I recently found out that it is quite valuable. Now, given the fact that I pretty much never use the equalizer in the process of transferring a video, simply because it's not necessary, I'm actually thinking about selling the techniques, but I still want to have an equalizer in case I need it. So, this much less valuable Fisher should be good enough for that purpose. However, in this setup, I have to be able to patch components together quickly and conveniently. And as you can probably imagine, these uh, short, directly attached RCA cables with hideously cheap plugs on them uh, really don't help doing that. So, that's why. Thank you for watching.